Hello, and welcome to the latest in our environmental policy video series. In each of these collections of bite-sized videos, we'll be bringing environmental science insights into the world of policy in 10 minutes or less. Over the course of this series, we'll be confronting a profound reality. The decisions we make now will be historic ones, and they will decide the stories we tell to generations to come about the fight against climate change. Our video series on climate action and transformative change will revisit the institution's work ahead of the COP26 Climate Summit, delving into the details of our manifesto for transformative change and the 54 recommendations it sets out for global climate action, as well as the analysis and evidence to support them. As the series goes on, we will learn more about the ways in which climate change has been caused by complex interactions between social, economic and natural systems. We'll also learn how we can employ systems thinking approaches to achieve multiple benefits for the environment, society and the economy. In this video, we'll be discussing energy systems and the different approaches we can take to shifting the world away from fossil fuels, which have played a clear role in increasing harmful climate change. Already, the energy transition has begun to take shape. In 2020, 28% of global electricity generation came from renewable sources, and it is unavoidable that different energy sources may be needed in different places, because there is no one-size-fits-all approach to how we create energy. Solar and wind energy have enormous potential to contribute to reducing carbon emissions at cheaper costs than alternatives, but will not be appropriate in all circumstances. What is clear is that we need to increase renewable sources of energy. Fossil fuels should be phased out as soon as we can, and while we're still dependent on them to create energy, we should prioritise other energy sources as much as possible. Alternative fuels, such as hydrogen, are likely to increase in use during the energy transition. However, currently only 1% of the hydrogen we produce is sustainable, and using a renewable source of energy to create hydrogen will still be less efficient than using that renewable energy source directly. So we need to use these new fuels appropriately. Often, decisions about energy will fall on individual people making decisions. So renewable options need to be affordable, they need to be real options, and they need to make sense in the local context where they need to be applied. We also need to communicate that information because if people feel that renewable energy is not an option for them, they won't investigate further. To make those options work for people, governments should put in place the infrastructure needed to support energy solutions, including appropriate sharing of knowledge so that we can roll out renewable energy in different countries where access has been limited. Moving to renewable sources can also give countries the benefits of increased access to energy and less dependence on powerful countries with control over fossil fuels. We need to commit to taking ambitious steps. That means that our aim must be phasing out fossil fuels. We also can't rely on techniques such as carbon capture and storage because they'll have a limited capacity to remove carbon. Instead, we should focus on not emitting that carbon in the first place which means shifting those investments to renewable energy technology instead. In our video on finance, we talked about how interventions rely on governments providing sufficient regulation to encourage investments by the private sector. This will be vital for the energy transition, where we need more research and innovation to support widespread change, while also allowing us to investigate new technologies and how they can help. However, most of the technology we need already exists. It's needed now are widespread changes in how we behave, which means people need to understand what their options are and how they can make positive choices. For many people, swapping to a renewable source of energy will lead to a number of benefits, so filling the gap on communication will be crucial moving forwards. So how can we empower a whole society approach to climate action? What skills can we give communities to make them part of the transition? How can science and evidence help us find answers? And how can we support innovative solutions to climate change? We'll be answering those questions and more as we continue with this IES policy series on climate action and transformative change. But if you want to get an inside track on the answers, you can read all about it in our landmark Manifesto for Transformative Change, which is available on the IES website. If you want to support our work on science-led climate action, you can become an affiliate, or if you're a professional in the environmental sector working with science, consider becoming a member of the IES. You'll find a link to our Manifesto for Transformative Change in the details below, along with our social media and a link to the IES website.
make sure you follow us across platforms so that you're up to date with all of our latest events, videos, and CPD opportunities. And remember to like the video, share it with friends and colleagues, and let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Join us again for another short video in our policy series on climate action and transformative change. But for now, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.